I'm Thomas Ram. I study computer science, currently in a master, and I've rewritten the um, tree supports, original for Cura, and Prusa Slicer ported them to be used in uh, their software as organic support. Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm a friend of his from the same university, and uh, I've helped out behind the scenes reviewing code for the tree supports. Uh, the reason why I started to look at tree supports is um, uh, another friend of mine, we were like playing D&D and um, he was the GM and he wanted some miniatures for it. So the way we did it, we just put uh, like a dome above the, the miniature and he would slice it, sent me the G-code file, I print it and then I gave him the dome. He removes everything and has the miniature without me knowing what monsters we will encounter. I tried to explain to him how the cure slicer works and it was like, yeah, sometimes the cure tree supports a bit moody, you need to change this setting a bit if it doesn't generate. And I tried to do that with the, the hobgoblin file I use on my uh, GitHub page as a, like a, to, sh to show what it does. And I tried to demonstrate it to, yeah, then you reduce it and then it works. And it didn't. And I tried it again and it didn't. And I tried it a few times, like five minutes and every time I increase the branch angle so that the skirt of the model can be supported, the sword suddenly was no longer supported even though it was like nearly close to directly over the build plate. And I got annoyed by that and was looking at it and was, no, there, there has to be some better way. The, either it's bugged that they, uh, they need to uh, find a bug or, or something, but that's, there is, has to, there has to be a way that I can improve that. But the beginning, I didn't fully understand it. But the more I started to to understand, the more parts of the code I didn't see, and more I was not completely happy with some uh, implementation details. So I just started to, in the beginning, um, play around it and try to improve the way that the paths are generated. And it, and it. Part from part of uh, evolved there. I first replaced the the way the branches, the, the path the branches take is uh, calculated. Um, next, I uh, read it the way the branches are drawn because the, in the current version, I think I could be wrong, but the branches are just like a, a circle. So if the the ang uh, branch angle is too high, there will be one circle. There will be one circle next to it. They don't overlap. That's not working. So I was like, I need to redo this. Um, then I was, okay, but I want the tips placed slightly different, so I read it, the uh, tip generation, and at that part, nearly everything was redone. At one point, I did the way I, I oh yeah, I also read it the way the avoidances generate, so that all the avoidances are calculated and parallel, and I... Speed up. A, a lot of speed up, like that's a... a that's what makes my implementation in Cura faster than their implementation. That, the old one. The, yep, then the old one. Yep. That that's what makes my implementation faster than the old implementation of Cura. It's just that because these I, uh, I paralyze this computational heavy parts. I yeah. I also like. Uh, I could go more into detail, but I think it's um, it's out of scope. It was definitely very interesting. I. Uh, before I started this, I didn't know any C++, so I know knew some programming languages. But so in the beginning, the first month or two was just like me being unhappy the way C++ do, uh, does um, does things. Because yeah, I I learn uh, things by doing it, but yeah, C++ is a bit more uh, complicated sometimes. One of the big improvements that the uh, guys at Prusa Slicer did, which in my opinion is the biggest improvement, they are, the trees have a um, constant thickness and a set distance. In Fiora, if the um, trees move very fast in a short, short set distance, they get pretty flat. And in Prusa Slicer, they stay the same thickness. So if you use a angle that causes them to move very fast to to have a large distance. They um, it improves stability. It uh, yeah, um, it definitely improves stability, and it's one of the uh, 
the biggest advantages I, uh, I see for using the organic support and brutal slicer. And over paint on. In Cura. Oh yeah, and paint on support. Uh, being able to use paint on supports with uh, tree supports is a big benefit. This is one of the things of the benefits of open source. It's yeah. basically you have developed this one feature and another software can take it and improve on it by seeing which of its features basically merge together with the new... Yeah. And can expand it. Exactly. Not only expand, but create new synergies. Like painting to see the branches, how they move, and then adding individual points of support to improve uh, how your model prints. Uh, when Prusa first put out uh, the teaser for organic supports, at, um, it accelerated. Uh, definitely, there was more um, activity in the in the pull request, and the people for uh, the developers of Cura asked, "So, hey, it's I've seen this. The, this is a great thing. Can you remove the draft feature? Or do you think it's done?" And from there, it went into the Christmas alpha, where they first have shown the tree supports in Cura, and later the um, organic supports came out in Bruce Slicer. If I think that the the fact that Prusa Slicer adopted this accelerated the implementation, uh, also accelerated the implementation in, uh, of it in Cura, uh, um, I know there was some interest of them before that, but it was further down on their priorities. It would have happened, may have happened in one year, maybe in two, it would have happened in one day, but that's, that's a great thing, so if there are multiple um, products that compete with, uh, with each other. If one suddenly starts to improve in one way, the other has to also improve. Especially with open source, because especially they have the ability source, yeah. to, to, especially with compatible licenses, to take parts of the code and merge it with their own. Yes. And this way, both uh, all the open source softwares can basically learn from each other yes. and improve much more than any closed source could ever do. Yes. In general, it means I am able to modify my code. Not only do I have access to the code, I'm allowed to modify it, I can publish it, and I have the uh, freedom to use it the way I want with the only um, being on only possible limitation um, that I have to share the changes I made if I share the result, uh, I, the, the, the resulting uh, program. And I think that's really important uh, regarding like owning your device, because if you have a if you have a device, you bought it, but the software is no open source. It may change, it may stop to to work, it may stop to be offered. You can't modify it. You don't really fully own the device if there's not a software that enables you to uh, that is open source that enables you to use that device. My opinion doesn't necessarily have to be the software you use. For example, yeah, I, I use Windows, but the only but it's still I can say I own my computer because I could put Win uh, I could put Linux in it instead of Windows, and that's in my opinion a very important aspect. Yeah, very similar. So open source means that I fully own the device. If I want to change something about the way it behaves, I have access to the code and I can modify these things. If uh, the the company should moves on, that manufacture the device moves on to do something different, I still have the access and I can still uh, extend its lifetime. I can uh, there can be a community around it that creates new features and finds new ways to to create uh, to use this device. And uh, a lot of new synergies come to play with open source because only because only with open source uh, people can build up on the innovations of others and don't have to re-implement everything, rework everything uh, from the ground up just to reach the same state. One big part is just at at a certain point when something is not working the way one wants, the annoyance gets so large that you say, "No, I'll I'll do it myself." So yeah, if I encounter something in a in a slicer where I'm like that that's not how I want it to work, I'm now trying to um, to do this for 15 minutes and I still don't think it's the way I want it. It's definitely possible I'm going to look into it. And with open source you can. Yeah, and with open source you can. That's the benefit. 
yeah, the, one of the advantages of open source is being able to to modify it and to make it work exactly the way you want, which is one thing I think is, expe- is especially sad is in a SLA printer market space the there are like close to none open source open hardware um, printers the Prusa SL1S and I do not know of another one it, I could be missing one but for in, in, in the FDM market if you get a, a cheap machine from China you can use Cura you can use Prusa slicer it will work. If you get a, at a SL, um, if you get an SLA printer, some SLA printers are intentionally locked to their version of their slicer. So you can't even use another one. You cannot develop another one because they use cryptography to to sign their slicing results, which I think is madness. Like if you look at all these things that have happened. Uh from the new tree support algorithm to the thing that's currently being discussed, uh, arc, arc overhangs uh, or the full control XYZ challenge, all these small details then can make their way into the open source printers because there is this community around it and because you have the access to the code to add features, try out new things. They might work, they might not work. It's uh, both as possible, but in the end, uh, the community uh, gets the benefit, and the community has the the all the all the options to choose from, and that is that is one of the really nice things with this ecosystem that we have. I'm still having some bugs in the tree support, some behavior that I don't like. Um, one issue, um currently having issues with is when multiple branches merge that in the middle there's a small island floating and it's a very annoying one to get rid of because it's not actually like a random line being placed there but you have three branches going towards it, uh, um, each other and the outer outer line will rest perfectly onto it but at one point when, when, it, when it is further up the point in the middle starts to be no longer part of the branch. And at that point, there will be a wall there that's then just floating midair, which is which is not great. But the downside, uh, but, uh, but another problem is, yeah, why don't just take the outer wall? Yeah, that doesn't work always. Sometimes you have um, holes in the middle that actually have to be there. For example, in Cura, I simulate a pattern of a support at the top of the model. And if it's like a triangle infill, like complete inside, it's that there are lines is defined by the holes. If you remove it, you only have one outline. This also doesn't work. So that's something I uh, want to like, uh, want to look into. Another thing that's Definitely not slicer related. I think it's really interesting. Well, don't even know if I will get to it with the um, recent, um, let's say, leaks of the Llama yeah. AI model uh, Facebook. I'll just say uh, RimWorld art description and speeches and large language models having a great way to synthesize, uh, to, to generate um, coherent text areas is something that's very interesting. but. I know nothing about AI, so it may never get anywhere. Yet. Well, you knew you knew nothing about C++ before you started. Yeah, but, C, but C++ is still a lot easier. AI is very mathematically heavy. So if anyone knows about that, then he may feel free to just. But one thing regarding the tree supports, one thing I learned of one thing I learned over the last three years is never done. Yeah, it's. It's never done, and the yeah, I don't know what I will do in the next uh, months or so. If there will be an interesting project that uh, come around, where I will be like um, adding something to it, it's definitely possible. But yeah, it could also be that it's not the case, and yeah, I'll just. I developed the tree support not because I think it's a such a great, not only because it's such a such a uh, good improvement that I also want to use myself, but also yeah, I had fun uh, fun developing it, so I'll just 
do whatever is fun to me and if some open source contribution falls out of it then great and if it doesn't it doesn't